and when we talk about changing the world, let's start with the world of Sixth Street Partners. Sure. How is potentially AI changing your world? The first thing I noticed about AI is that all of our limited partners, our investors, and all of our portfolio companies to a first approximation want to understand it. And they're also looking to us to have some thoughts that are differentiated, not just to understand it, but to understand what to do about it and what to do with it. So there's a lot of conversations going on. So help us a little bit, as if we were one of your, okay. your clients, okay? <laughs> Give us a sense, a little bit of understanding here. We hear a lot of things that are wonderful, potentially, about generative sure. AI, some things that are pretty scary about it as yes. well. What do you tell them about the upside potential? So I tend to be rather calm about it, maybe in part because I've been working on AI in one form or another for a long time. My PhD from a million years ago, 1991, mm -hmm. was on AI in an early iteration of AI when we didn't really get that far. And the techniques that have now become really valuable were techniques that I actually was pretty skeptical about 30 years ago. But what happened is the computers got way faster, doubling about every 18 months, and enough doubling between 1991 and now, and now you are seeing some amazing things. And so, yet, I would also say, at some fundamental level, it's just math. These neural networks are doing some really interesting math, but they're just doing some calculations. The calculations are letting us do pattern matching, statistical recognition in an unprecedented way, and that is really powerful. So having seen so many ups and downs of AI, I believe, and I think many people share this belief, that this time it actually is different. And you can see it. You can go to BARD or ChatGPT and ask it some questions and get some pretty amazing things coming back. Now, it's also got problems. There's the hallucinations that are much talked about. And so what are we going to do to ground those hallucinations, I think is one interesting topic. Another interesting topic is as the doubling continues, and I can tell you that every three months, I'm seeing something that's not more twice as interesting as what I saw three months before, but 10 times more interesting. We are in some crazy exponential inflection point. So looking out into the future, we're starting to ask ourselves, when are these computers going to be as smart as we are? We don't think they're going to be conscious in any way, but they might be intelligent. They might be as intelligent. They might be more intelligent. What kind of things will happen once we can tell the AIs, go read every book ever written, especially all the textbooks, if that can be done in a way that respects intellectual property, go read all the textbooks and learn everything in them and tell us everything that is implied by what's in them and feed that back into the AI and train the next generation of yourself. As this loop gets going, we can see the prospects for some really interesting things. It wouldn't surprise me if in a few years we can tell, tell the computers, uh, please invent a commercially effective nuclear fusion reactor that's safe. And they might just go and do it. And you can imagine the computers doing the same thing for climate change. We're already seeing, and I can talk about a company I'm working with, uh, Recursion Pharmaceuticals, we're already seeing what the computers can do for really hard problems such as drug discovery. Right? So there's no question in my mind that they're going to make a huge difference. There's also some concerns. And so delivering AI in a way that is bold and also responsible and safe and ethical is a huge area of concern. Marty, it strikes me you're in, if not a unique, a very special situation in that you're a scientist who knows the financial markets terribly well. You've come to some extent from the financial world of global Wall Street. Uh, put those two things together, the AI and its potential for good and pot potentially some risks as well, with the financial world. I mean, when you talk about, for example, hallucinations, that doesn't sound very good to me if that's <laughs> part of what's running the financial systems. <laughs> right. So, well, to set it all in context, I started working on Wall Street in 93. And in 93, when people like me showed up on Wall Street, I, I, I often got asked, could you help me figure out how to print this document or turn my <laughs> computer on and off, right? What is this, what is this uh, kind of quant math and software guy 
doing here. So it took a little while where we, people like me, could find the problems that we could actually solve that would help us make better markets for our clients and manage our risk more effectively. That's something we've been working on for a very long time, bringing math to Wall Street. And so I've had an opportunity to see many iterations of this movie. Of this movie. So initially, one of the things I might work on would be, we've got a complicated book of risk. How do we hedge it? We've got 30 seconds to make a phone call and construct the first order hedge of the book. All right, so we do that, lots of math and software. We want to do it reliably. We don't want to make mistakes. We certainly don't want to hallucinate and get the wrong hedge and maybe make the risk position worse. And we got pretty good at that. But I remember thinking even then, okay, so now we're calculating this hedge and the person next to me is calling the exchange and saying, buy or sell that many futures. I remember thinking even as a kid, well, we could do that part too, but it took a long time. Eventually, we got there, especially in equities, markets that were exchange traded where there was a lot of data, and we could close that loop. You could do some analysis, and then you could say, this is the trade we should do, and then you could have the computers just do that trade. And at the time that began, there was a lot of concerns. How could that go wrong? What if the computer puts in the wrong trade? And then the whole loop got faster and faster, and computers were putting in orders with a latency of sub one millisecond, much faster than a trader could ever operate. And then we actually had some, some train wrecks. Uh, there was a company, Night Trading, where the algos run amok and kept putting orders into the exchange at, that were at the wrong price. And so all the orders got taken out on the other side and they eroded their capital in 45 minutes and then they were bankrupt. So some things have gone horribly wrong. We learn from those episodes. I'm in the camp that sees AI as essentially wonderful, but still more of the same. So more math, more analysis, things going faster and faster. And yet, I think there are some principles that are stable in time. So here's one. I remember a town hall years ago where I was talking, and I said there's really three strategies that I see when it comes to computers. Number one is you could be a person who tells the computers what to do. That's my strategy and it's working pretty well for me. It's not for everybody. Number two, you could collaborate effectively with the computers and the people who tell the computers what to do. And I recommend that to everybody. Everybody can embrace that strategy and use the computers to give yourself a force multiplier, leverage, a superpower, and then go on and do more interesting things that the computers can't do. And you always worry, well, maybe we won't be needed at all and the computers will take over. I've never seen that happen. The third strategy, which I have also seen, is stand in the way of progress, see if in the name of your job security, you can stop the computers and that is really dumb and don't do that. And some people do do that. I think that that advice applies today. I think everybody needs to be looking at computers and generative AI and thinking, how can I use this to be more productive? So the way I would think about gen AI, generative AI is yes, there's some amazing things that could happen. There's some terrible things that we must work to mitigate and prevent. But the central case is that it makes us more productive.